in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed yesterday let me sing it again don't sing just listen it's a very simple but very powerful song um, I'm not a musician I don't sing special numbers I sing songs as they respond to the things that the Lord is doing in my spirit and I believe this is what God is doing in this season with the church what God is doing in my life and what God is doing in the life of any and everyone who truly takes him serious no eye has seen no ear has heard what god has prepared for me so i submit to your work in me till christ is formed in me no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me no eye has seen nor ear has heard what God has in store for me so I submit to your work in me Till Christ may form in me. Can I tell you something? Just because God said it will happen does not guarantee that it will happen. There are many things in the Bible God said would happen that did not happen. Because the manifestation of the prophetic speakings of God depends on a response from the potential recipient. There is always something on your own path and on your own end that activates the word of God. The same way I said it is the union of a healthy eye and the presence of light that produces sight. There is also the union of the prophetic speaking of God and a willing heart that is both willing and obedient. It is to the obedient that the potential to eat the good of the land resides are we together so just because you heard that god said you are this and that does not guarantee that it will happen my prayer this morning is that for everything we'll be receiving that god will grant us the heart to not only receive but to put it to practice and that it will work for us in the name of jesus it is dangerous to have results that you do not understand the dynamics of its whereabout in as much as yesterday i taught you that there is a god dimension to our result we owe ourselves the responsibility to understand the other part of the result that has the dynamics that is explainable it is never all up to god and it is never all up to us hallelujah praise the name of the lord i like to study the truths and the principles that produce results not just to celebrate results when you celebrate what you do not understand you will fear your success because you know it will not last and you're right it will not last anything sustainable is sustained by light understanding illumination you can have short-term success by luck but you cannot have sustainable success by luck he says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except and unless he strives lawfully praise the name of the lord is it all right if we take five minutes to pray in the spirit do you love to pray 
yes when we pray it is not a religious ritual we are giving the holy spirit room to find expression through our spirits through our minds so that we can hear him so that we can align to what he wants us to do the primary assignment of prayer in my opinion is found in luke chapter 9 and verse 29 the bible says and as he prayed the he being jesus he says the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering that means when we pray there is the transformation that happens within us hallelujah prayer affords you the opportunity and provides the potential for growth spiritual growth a heightened level of sensitivity growth in your discernment so as you pray in the spirit see it as part of the meeting we are leaders he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint low 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings will you blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends it's from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends to the god of all flesh you're my God and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh. You're my God and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Go ahead and bless him in the spirit.
people the power of God is coming on them right now as I speak and for that person the prophetic word for you is it's a new season you are stepping into a very defining moment in your spiritual experience tonight is a miracle service but it's, it's very important you are a leader for someone God is saying I should tell you return back to the place of the altar return back to the place of the altar you have left your secret place the Lord is bringing you a word your victory was because of the power and the strength of your altar avoid distraction you will not get it that way God is speaking to someone return back to the place of the altar Shh. 
return back to the place of the altar return back to the place of the altar cut away distractions in your life your life is too busy and you are not achieving anything return back to the place of the altar one encounter with the God of the Bible in the place of the altar can define the next 10 20 years of your life in Jesus name we pray please be seated let's see how far God is able to help us this morning I want you to be very sensitive because when we are in the presence of God like this the Holy Spirit is also doing things in the life of people while the Word of God is coming is more than a lecture you are receiving the ministry of the Spirit is the kind of ministry where the influence of the Holy Spirit comes upon the words and the speakings of God's people this is a difference between just a mere communication or a lecture and the ministry of the Spirit I'm talking to leaders so expect a lot of impartations while we speak hallelujah the movement of the Holy Spirit while we speak is not just about being anointed it is an attestation to the fact that what you are hearing is not just sound coming to your ears that beyond the realm of your hearing something is entering your spirit hallelujah praise the name of the Lord in this kingdom or in life there are two ways to approach the matters of life and destiny I want you to listen carefully there are two ways to approach the matters of life and destiny there are three people now who will start running under the anointing just hold them you don't have to bring them out just hold them and just keep them calm it's just the activity of the Holy Spirit in their life God is building them it's a grace I just saw a door open in the spirit and I saw three people like that grace for speed coming upon them who have the time to do the impartation but right now three of them the light help them please hallelujah praise God just help them when someone is under the anointing close to you you help them that is one three of them I saw in my vision I mean the season is coming to an end that door has been opened. a door stands for access 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 in the spirit access is is a grace for speed that takes people beyond because one of the ways that we redeem time in the spirit one of the ways that we redeem time is for God to give us speed speed even by the Spirit of God hallelujah so as these words come once I just interject it shouldn't distract us we're teaching the word but then we must allow the Holy Spirit this is what this is what we came to experience it's more than a lecture you are immersed in the ministry of the Spirit the ministry of the Spirit is beyond just a mere communication where you say yes I agree there is a spiritual activity that is happening to you I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Here's the part of the song I love. I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. I have. Hallelujah. Who is Chidi? 
I'm hearing the name Chidi, like C H I D I. Someone that should be a male name, am I right? Chidi, there is a Chidi that God is no, no, you don't have to come out, don't worry, we we'll have that time in light. I just felt like sometimes you see god does not distract us like this just because um this is not about there's, there's something that you are learning when you see these things you have to discern what god is doing it tells you how how determined god is to see that you find rest and you experience him hallelujah the lord is bringing captivity the family of chidi chidi this name i'm seeing the lord is bringing rest roundabout freedom from there's there's a unique expression of demonic assault in that family this gentleman don't miss the service tonight this one looking at me wearing glasses this one my friend God will begin a walk in your life from this meeting but this night service is for you come with your heart opened because God has a great assignment for you very very great assignment for you in the name of Jesus great assignment for you somebody will begin to laugh now by the spirit no 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 this is not something mechanical laughing by the spirit the bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous this is not some super how does someone come to church discipline and organize and just because a man is speaking you now start laughing you're not acting that laughter you see is not a mechanical thing that laughter you see is a token of victory in the spirit that something has been established in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ laughter can you imagine that that someone begins to laugh just by the spirit remember this used to happen in Kenneth Hagin's meetings and ignorant people just kept criticizing <laughs> so let's 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 get to our discussion we're talking with leaders there are two ways to approach the matters of life and destiny and I want you to please pay attention number one you can approach life and destiny sensually just using brain work logic and guesswork largely whether it is leadership or your sojourn as far as purpose and destiny is concerned you can choose to lean entirely on the realm of logic the realm of common sense and the realm of trial and error you can experiment your way through life in hope that you are right or number two the second option which is the more superior is that you can walk the path of the spiritual man there is the approach of the natural man one who is largely driven by experiment, driven by senses, trial and error. But there is the path of a spiritual man. And God is generous enough to present both options to you when you begin your work. That means it is, it is within your power to choose that I want to live my life naturally, sensually, by experimentation. And God will honor that decision. Or... You can choose that I want to follow the path of a spiritual man. A spiritual man is not a pastor. A spiritual man is not a preacher. A spiritual man is one who has chosen as an act of your will to submit to the word and to submit to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. These are the provisions that turn ordinary men to become spiritual. You are not spiritual just because you are praying in tongues. No. You are spiritual to the degree to which your life leans wholly on the authority of scripture and the ministry, the supremacy 
of the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit is not an opinion you consult when you are confused. He literally becomes the life force. The, your intelligence is derived from your interaction with scripture and your interaction with the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So when people tell you they are spiritual, it is not by carrying a, a form or regalia of religion. No. If you say you are spiritual, I have to test your loyalty to the supremacy of the word of God as against your mind, your feelings, your opinions or status quo. And then I also have to test your honor to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. If I find you wanting in these two dimensions, you are not spiritual. It's as simple as that. Are we together? I just defined for you what the Bible calls a spiritual man. A spiritual man is not just one who prays in tongues. A spiritual man is not just one who is in church all the time. A spiritual man is not just one who cries when they raise a song of worship. Mm -mm, mm -mm. True spirituality is measured by the depth of your resoluteness to submit to the supremacy of the word of God. Are we together now? That the word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit become the principal influencers of your thinking, your behavior, your character, and then your destiny. No matter how popular, no matter how convenient it is, if it is inconsistent with the word of God and it's not based on the prompting and the allowance that the spirit of grace gives you, you will restrict yourself. The assignment of your will in this sense now becomes to move in the direction of the word of God and the voice of the spirit or otherwise. That is the path of a spiritual man. And I can tell you, many people are not spiritual. It's not an insult. There is selective or conditional spirituality. That means it will now look like you are obedient. Now, spirituality must be absolute. It does not matter whether it seems to work well in my favor or not. I trust the intelligence of the spirit. I trust the intelligence of the word of God. This is why the word of God, the Bible is a compendium of God's dealings with people through time and he allowed us to vet his integrity without hiding anything so that we can come to the conclusion that he is dependable that even when we do not understand him we can trust him wanting to understand God before you follow him is a recipe for disaster because in the dealings of God with men, there are many dimensions of his dealings that it will take years for you to understand what God was doing. You will need to start the journey. It is five years into the journey to begin to make sense. So when you become scientific and calculative in your approach, you will not only slow down your pace, you will most likely not be able to work with God. You ask anybody who God is using today, they will tell you for a major part of their journey they were just moving blindly where are you going to i just know he said follow me where are we what is the name of what we are doing i do not know the mission is follow me the question is do you trust the person who is leading you if you do then follow are we together so there are many people right now whose destinies are full of fear and the reason is because we always want to be in control of things before we move. Unfortunately, one of the assignments of the Holy Spirit when you begin your walk with God, listen carefully, when you begin your walk with God, the Holy Spirit cuts you away. Are we together? From that sense of self-confidence, wanting to know the details before you follow. And there are many ways that God achieves that. Let me tell you the truth. There are times in your walk with God, God can ask you to come out of the room and you are not sure whether it's him or not. You can come out and stand expecting something to happen. You stand after 10, 20 minutes, he will say, go back and sleep. And that's the end of it. What was the goal of that thing? It's a training. It's not about something that will happen. We usually, well, okay, now that I obeyed you, what is the reward immediately? No. I'm training you to depend on me even when you do not understand me. Are we together now? Because you will be learning now that kingdom leadership 
is a derivative of your experience with God. If you do not have a rich experience with God, you cannot lead people to be able to fulfill the purposes of God for their lives. You have to know how God works with men to be able to know how to help men work with God. Did you get what I said? You need to know as a leader how God works with men. Then you can guide men to know how to work with God. If you are in ignorance as to how God works with men, the economy of God with men, then you will not be able to lead people. The people you lead will not be a spiritual people. And that will have nothing to do with whether you are a good person or bad person. It's just ignorance of the ways of God. As leaders, whether you want to be or you are in business or you are a preacher on the pulpit or you are a family man or you are a captain of industry an academician it does not matter the geography of your witness you will hear me say the training is usually and largely the same especially at the initial point when God begins the training of an apostle a prophet a professor a businessman someone who is a potential politician in fact in many cases all of them start together as friends and they do not even know what they will become so the initial point of the training is the same he will submit all of them to the supremacy of god's word and to the ministry of the holy spirit it is as they progress he now begins to diverge them to the various dimensions that represent their core areas are we together now you will find out that one who is given to the apostolic and the prophetic as they grow in prayer and the word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, one will seem to be in a greater sense inclined towards the matters of prayer and consecration and the secret place, not even knowing what is drawing him to that unusual experience. It is God distributing them. One person becomes, he cultivates an unusual appetite for knowledge, not just the knowledge of the word, but even the knowledge of the systems and it does not know why this is why it is dangerous listen carefully it is dangerous to create doctrines out of your personal experience how God builds you is not the only way he builds how God builds you is not the only way he builds it is just your experience of how he builds if I subject everyone to my personal spiritual training I will only produce apostles you see that now but that would be a dangerous thing for those sent to business that would be a dangerous thing for those sent to politics because my unique training was given to mold me to become what I am and I'm becoming right now so you can glean from it but more than my experience I must submit you to the Word of God because it does not matter what you are becoming the manual that will make you is still the same so in my mentoring you to become i must lay emphasis on the integrity of the word more than my unique experience are we learning now by the time i become so emotionally connected to my spiritual experience i will mold you to become something that you are not comfortable with I will be happy because it's convenient for me based on what God has called me to do. There are many people today who are victims of the unique training of leaders. A businessman, for instance, who is mentoring somebody who will become an apostle will most likely frustrate that young man. Do you know why? Because that man will be given to learning the wisdom of Egypt and learning all kinds of things. But this guy called into the apostolic and the prophetic, he can receive an instruction to go and fast for 40 days. And respectfully speaking, it may not make sense to the businessman because the businessman has been trained to understand the value of time. He has been trained by God to understand the value of negotiations and the place of wisdom. And the person says, listen, this time you are wasting. You are just lying down and saying, God, speak to me. You will be poor and your children will beg for, will beg for bread. And it does not understand that it is a unique training that is producing a kind of person. Are we together now? Yes. So, the gentleman 
to honor the businessman mentor will give up on his apostolic and prophetic training and he will find out that even though he has an apostolic call the man he's becoming is just a businessman and that is not wrong if that were the call based on this revelation that i i prefer to expose people to the ministry of scripture communicating doctrine doctrine is how god makes people my personal experience comes with the limitation of my call but there are many other dimensions that may not be captured in my experience this is very powerful i'm saying this especially for parents too because there are times that respectfully speaking parents can lead children and the only way you know that god leads is not the only way he leads many people today have aborted destiny because of loyalty to the templates they were given eli thank god for how god used you but be sensitive to what god is doing with samuel god is raising him in a way you have not known before so make sure you guide him and encourage him not discourage him just because it does not look like your training does not mean it is not god doing it hallelujah are we together let's talk about our experience with god there is no spiritual leader by spiritual there i don't mean church leader there is no spiritual leader who will be able to be effective in this end time without having a strong experience with god hallelujah very very important where we shared yesterday the bible says for us that should be second second chronicles chapter 26 i believe we read verse 5 and then we went to verse 15 but let's look at verse 5 i believe talking about uzziah it says as long as he sought the lord god made him to prosper his prosperity and his excelling was a product of his passionate press for the things of god please look at me it does not matter what god has called you to become and it does not matter what area of leadership let me submit to you your longevity in leadership and influence will be proportional to the depth of your knowledge of god the depth of your work with god that is the reason why in order of priority before god begins to expose you to the matters of purpose the assignment is follow me not follow it when god calls a man the next thing he does is not to reveal to you where you are going he reveals himself first are we together now it is dangerous to come to god and then leave God and start following and pursuing purpose. Notice the pattern that he gave the apostles who would later become the initial leaders of the church. He called all of them from their various, you know, vocations. And he said, follow me and I will make you. That's their lives seemed wrecked and frustrated to a point where they had to open up and say, listen, we have to confront you on this. We have left everything to follow you. What is the need for us? Because this, your training does not make sense to us. We were successful people before you called us. Right now, we've left fishing. We've left everything. Remember when Jesus died, they were angry because they felt scammed. And in John 21, Peter said, I go a fishing. Let me go back to what I was doing. The disciples said, we go back with you. When he met Jesus Christ, that was why when he saw that it was Jesus Christ, he said, go away from me, I'm a sinner. I've done something. I didn't know you would come back for me. I didn't know there was value in seeking and knowing you. Listen, the reason why God insists that we have an experience with him before he lifts us, huh, is because for every dimension of glory and influence, please listen, there are battles there are dynamics of living in every realm of leadership and growth that if you do not have a rich experience with God, you will not last. Hallelujah. There are certain enemies that you have no business knowing about until you attain certain heights in life. So before you get there, God prepares you. Do you know 
it is because of this inability to be properly prepared that God himself impedes the growth of certain people. It's not the devil stopping the growth of certain people. God, by his mercy, he vets you and looks at your spiritual energy and capacity and says, no, I cannot give you this kind of membership. I cannot give you this kind of influence because I love you too much to expose you to a realm where you do not have the stamina to stand and remain. Hear me, please. If you are Elijah, make sure you know God enough to not allow the pride of Jezebel intimidate you. Because for every mantle of Elijah, there is the challenge of Jezebel looking for you. If you are Samson, make sure you have the strength to resist Delilah before. Don't wait until you become a champion. Because Delilah only looks for Samson. Delilah does not look for Joseph. Mm -mm. So, there are demons assigned to mantles, not people. Listen, listen, listen. There are spirits that have no, they don't want to know your name. They just look for whoever is carrying this mantle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are spirits assigned over Enugu state. There is a level of wealth that if you ever attain it, you activate the operation of those spirits. They don't look for you because of you. They don't care who you are. They only care for whoever because anybody that attains that level of influence the realm of the spirit knows the impact you can have as far as God's purposes are concerned you're a music artist there are spirits that are sent to derail people at several levels so you may see someone fighting a battle and say oh dear these people are not serious it's because you've not risen you don't know the one assigned you have not picked your mantle and you are not walking that is why that's why many times please hear me when you find out that you are praying and you are loving god yet some doors are not opening stop binding and casting ask lord what are you doing what level of equipping do i need to go through Becoming great and becoming successful is the easiest part of success. Maintaining it and staying there. The ability to retain your honor. Please listen carefully. I hope God is blessing you already. Oh God, I pray that you grant me. The whole world must hear my voice. I can't be quiet. Lord, you, you took me from a family with nobody in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody must hear my voice. <sighs> All right? Good prayer. Then there is a scan over your spiritual life in the realm of the spirit. And it's like a shrub trying to carry mango fruits. You know a shrub? And yet the kind of fruit it wants to carry is mango. The, the fruit alone is what will kill the shrub. God, give me global visibility. And yet you were crying simply because somebody told you you were stupid. <laughs> Lord, my business must be number one in Enugu. Are you ready for the attacks? And the antagonism that comes with influence are you prepared for it I hope you are learning go and read about people in the Bible that's why God gave us a Bible let me take a few for you and then you will learn the Bible talks about a young man called Joseph innocent young man this gentleman goes to bed and then he has a dream in the dream you know um, he sees the Sun moon and the 11 stars bowing to him he gets up innocently maybe a morning devotion I can imagine the father is there the mother and the brothers remember they were not friends they were brothers say brothers and then he shares his dream daddy I have something to say I slept and I saw the Sun moon and 11 stars bowing to me the brothers did not seem to react there immediately but something was about to come that the gentleman was not prepared for. Then the father now out of love for him gives him a coat of many colors. And the brother said, we've had enough. Can you imagine for brothers to come together and plan over their brother, not an enemy. 
and said, you know what? We are going to kill this person. And they threw him in a well and carried the coat, spilled it with blood and went to tell the father that a wild beast had killed him. Imagine that kind of thing. Imagine Daniel. It's in your Bible, ladies and gentlemen, that on account of the excelling of Daniel as a politician, some people came together and said, listen, we need to do something about this man. And the Bible says they searched as far as his duties are concerned. They did not find anything. What a man. And they said, what, 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 what area are we going to trap him in? And they found out his covenant of prayer. They said, fine. We will angle it through politics. You would think they were just political people determined to make sure that Babylon were a safe place. They literally changed the policy in the parliament because they were looking for one man. Finally, they get him. And then, even though the king liked him, he had to submit to the principles, the laws of the land. They threw him in a lion's den. Do you know? Please look up. I'm not sure Daniel's, Daniel's first prayer would be for safety from the lions. His first prayer would be avoidance of that effect, that thing. Are we together? That means he's going to say, Lord, show up so that I don't even get to the lion's den in the first place. No way. I confess positively. Me and the lions, I have no covenant with them. I'm a man of prayer. And the more he's praying, the more he's getting to the den. I can imagine what happened when they threw him there. What happens when your prayer keeps moving you towards what you are praying against? It's in your Bible. There are times that your prayer does not move you away from what you are praying for. <laughs> or praying against. It moves you towards this man was a man of prayer the Bible tells us that there was no fault in him so you can't say he was suffering the consequence of anything and yet his prayer life kept leading him until finally he got there but that was the price that was needed for his exaltation so be careful sometimes what you are asking for is not answered not because god didn't hear he knew that you are not number one you are not serious and number two you are not even in a position sincerely it will be wickedness for god to make that prayer come to pass because you are clearly not prepared for it do you know what it meant for jesus christ himself to start renegotiating salvation i love the bible it does not hide anything jesus your jesus says father if it be thy will you thought because he was the word incarnate he would be so invincible against trouble no jesus's vulnerability was clearly recorded in the bible he said listen can't we negotiate this do i have to die let me remind you my father that you are still god there is still another way but he just remember now this is the way of the spiritual man think after talking nicely to god like that he will say look you just touched me okay you will not die he still died he still <laughs> you asked me to talk to leaders listen more than it does not cost god anything this i have learned from scripture and learn from my life believe me when I tell you it does not cost God anything to give you all the things you are praying for but you see the all-seeing eye of God sees both the results you are getting and the trouble the effects you are in the world of men this is what you need to understand the Bible says the highest heavens belong to the Lord but the earth has he given to the children of men that means all the things that plague men including jealousy including envy bitter envy even unto death still resides within your domain that is why when God wants to raise you to be a great leader the first thing he gives you is not the grace and the mantle for purpose the first thing he gives you is the gift of himself you must have a deep enough experience with God. So there are times that you will see God training a businessman as if he's going to become an apostle. And the man is saying, God, but it's his business now. You are saying, it's just, my own is just money. And God says, you better fast. 
you better fast because it's not about buying and selling you are going to be confronting spirits you will need that prophetic grace to know when to negotiate which business everything even darkness from afar looks like light say an experience with god many leaders are more focused about the technical skills of leadership many leaders are more focused on the value that they provide and there's nothing wrong with that many leaders are more focused on their influence and the loyalty of the people they lead but in order of priority for you to be an effective leader in ministry in business and to have any kind of sustainable kingdom influence that lasts please hear me the first part of call is your experience with god do you know god enough do you know how he delivers from trouble don't learn it when you are in trouble learn it before the things that are written at four time your bible says they are written for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope i don't wait until the day i get into trouble and i say god how did you even say we come out of trouble no no way before you get there you begin to learn the dynamics in your knowledge of god i will call upon the lord who is deserving or worthy of praise he says so shall i be saved from my enemies that means i gather this as arsenals as i'm rising i expect some things to happen if someone looks at you and says you came to this office four years and they have made you an executive director over my dead body you don't go around and start panicking it's a proof of lack of thorough training if you learned and you were built by god you should already expect that this would happen and you should already have the plan to deal with it are we together there are people who had a greater sense of peace being poor than they were when they had money nobody disturbed you nobody lied to you nobody did anything and then you're praying and say father before the end of 2022 i must have my first hundred million i must have my first one billion and as you are saying it i'm sure the angels are just watching and saying goodness do you really what know what it takes to sit down on hundred million one billion of your money and be in christ listen again in your mind to everything i said and be because you see for a one billion naira holder let's use naira one billion naira holder there are certain relationships you must maintain that are not godly did you hear what i said there are certain relationships you must maintain at that level of influence that are not godly you have to master the dynamics of living as a sheep among wolves there are there are there are <laughs> hear me let me tell you this even as a man of god rising in influence you will be amazed at the proposals that will come around the world i submit to you i'm talking to leaders you cannot imagine the groups and the associations and the proposals that people have brought apostle there is this committee of so 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 across africa there is this one they are a group of global this and that and that and with all sense of joy i'm not stupid i'm intelligent enough to know what is demonic you cannot imagine the things i have rejected in my life as a price for remaining true with god now this is not the part of many people's stories that you will hear you just know that they are walking with god and god is lifting them let me tell you there are times in your rising where loving god looks like foolishness because the amount of things you will lose you will need to check and say what else do i have what else do i have left something more than gold i've got something more than gold something more than gold i've got something more than gold if all i have is jesus i've got something more than gold i 
I will tell it to the world. Jesus is Lord. See, one of the deception of greatness is the presence of many material things. Material things have such jealousy, they will fight your loyalty for God. Let that car arrive and you will see how much your heart was connected to it. The moment the tire busts, you can't even pray until they fix the tire. The tire of that car. Remember, you rolled around when you were just taking a cab and said, Lord, everything to you. By the time you build a business and you hear that the stocks of your company are about to crash and God says, go and fast for five days. You will lie down and say, Lord, so is this how my company is going to go down? That is the reason why God tells you to eat for the journey is far when he's subjecting you to fasting and prayer listen you don't know what it means to train six children or five children you may not have the time to fast for 21 days again so before the marriage comes he makes you to fast as if and you don't god what are you doing to me you are building stamina and energy for the days that are coming God, by this teaching this morning, is giving someone a definition as to what has been happening to you. God, I'm not seeing any result, but you will say fast. Just when I'm done, you give me two weeks break. You say start another one. Why is that so? Because you will be so busy. You will be so busy. There are, you will have to lean on your, the, 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 the prayer bank that you have built for years. The word bank you have built for years. hear what the spirit of god is telling you you're not listening to a lecture yes sir mm. there are some of you because of the kind of wealth that god is going to be committing to you the nature of your training will almost frustrate you you will find out that you are wealthy you are earning a salary of 200,000 and God can say so everything you know why because compared to what is coming in the future what you are saving is nonsense God is using what you have to keep training you Lord what, what is this now you told me to sow 200,000 and then my arrears just came you are saying sow it again it does not make sense it will make sense when a billion dollars come that training will make sense when you become a captain over conglomerate and God will say so for this mission field you have been trained already listen down God is training you to be a prophet and in the process of knowing him he will allow you to make certain mistakes deliberately you will stand in the midst of people and say who is John here and there is nobody who is John and truly you believe that you had that name john it will sting your ego so that pride will die the day that prophetic grace begins to work you are no longer conscious of your reputation your awareness of obedience is greater than your validation can i tell you the truth treasure your scars they will be the anchors for your remaining in the future treasure your scars when we get to heaven today there is only one person who has the scar that is branded that calls him the Christ you will not know Jesus just by the crown on his head look at the hands of everybody and their feet there is only one who has that unique scar your scar can give you a place in destiny what you are ashamed of today will become your crown tomorrow. Yes, sir. I hope God is speaking to someone tonight. Listen. Most times when people come to me, <laughs> you know, I love people and when they come sincerely, the first thing they want to do is to receive anointing. And they kneel down and say, I ask them, what do you want? Some of you, four times the four but now that's that's how many portion now double portion is two double double portion now that's quadruple portion four and I look at them with love and compassion and mercy 
Is this how you want to destroy yourself? Double portion? Elisha asked for double portion. He did not know what he asked for. Look at how he died. Elijah did not die. Oh. Elijah went to heaven. But the one who asked for double portion did not master the law of life. Look at how he died. Sickness kept following him because it was dominion over death that took Elijah to heaven. And Elisha asked for double portion. He did not know the attack that was looking for him. He died of sickness. The Bible tells us what killed him. So, for those who have been crying for three times the anointing of Elisha, show me the books you are reading. Show me the experience you are having with God. I want to walk in the healing anointing. Go and read about healing evangelists. Most of them did not live more than 80 years. Are we together? Because you see, the core area of your anointing is where Satan attacks. He sends spirits to make you a victim of your call. This is how Satan works. If your call is unto healing and the rest, you must master living in health and the administration of the life of God. If your call is to bring people towards holiness and righteousness, you must master the art of circumventing Delilah. There are people who follow certain anointings, spirits. Is God giving us intelligence? Listen, let me tell you, by the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of being with many fathers of faith in this nation. And when I have the privilege of talking with them, more than the things they are saying, I am observing. Observing. I can tell you, that they have such a deep experience with God deeper than most people know what we do on stage only accounts for 30 percent of ministry I hope you know that a major part of your life must be behind the veil that is what strengthens what you do in the presence of people here I've had the honor of meeting very wealthy people multi-millionaires in all kinds of currencies and when I sit with them, especially some of them who are very, very wealthy and love God, my goodness, the level of consecration, some of the rules that God had to create in their own lives, you would think God were too strict, but that is exactly what kept them and is still keeping them. When you begin to walk with God, when you learn doctrine and you rise to a particular point, listen to me, let me tell you what God begins to do. God will begin to introduce unique rules based on the vulnerabilities he sees in your life. If he studies you and finds out that, look, it looks like you, your weakness is women. For instance, God is going to put a unique rule in your life that applies to only you. In a way that if somebody looks at you, he will say, Kai, but God, this is unfair. God knows what he's stopping. And once you walk with that mold, you will find out that you will circumvent that weakness and you'll be able to be great. There are others, your weakness, you are a man of God. Even if a lady walks naked in front of you, it does not affect you. But if you see an envelope, even if you are passing and you see an envelope on the ground, you must pick it and check what is inside. Watch this. I know you are laughing, but pay attention. Are we together? Are we together? So God knows when the devil wants to destroy you he can bring enemies in the name of members for only one year who are millionaires but carry within them the spirit of your destruction if you have not gone through the school of the spirit that has purged you and broken you to a point where you lose an appetite for those things so god can give you rules like you will not have more than four cars at any point in your life your wife will say what kind of a husband are you they gave us 10 cars you gave away six why and you say i have a covenant with god god told me i will at any given point i will only have four cars it is not a doctrine it is a training god has vetted you in the spirit and i found out that if you have more than that that is that is the gauge of your discipline if it crosses that it can do something to you is someone learning 
there are people no matter how they fast and pray they will not be able to pack a stadium to talk to the people the reason is because what will happen to you after that meeting because of your low level of prayer your low level of consecration God will have to respect the allowance you have given him in your life he will not expose you to battles that are beyond your level of spiritual preparation is this making sense to you so the higher you want to rise that's what I'm trying to say you must have a deep and a rich experience with God there are levels when you get to with God it no longer becomes an emotional dealing it is a covenant there are certain things when you do with God God will bring a sworn blessing upon you because you have gone this far I swear by my name that in any good state you will never beg for bread again to your children's children you see when you see people come with certain transgenerational blessings they didn't come just by dancing around and say God send <clears throat> it was an experience with God when Abraham took his child only child and placed that child he actually was going to kill the child in fact he actually killed the child because when the child dies in your heart he really died Romans chapter 4 already tells us his contemplations that Abraham planned to kill Isaac then when he's done you say I've obeyed you please raise my child back to life let me go back home with him because I don't know what to go and tell his mother I know we easily say Abraham gave up Isaac women mothers do you know after waiting 25 years honey where are you and the, the aides they are not all the aides too have gone home because they went with him Abraham was already ready for his marriage to fail because if you are a woman if that kind of husband comes back let me see the hand that prepares the food for him and he says honey um, let's just kneel down and give God thanks in this our generation that is over before he even arrives you have to read the scripture with your mind too so you don't know what he was willing to lose as he carried Isaac do you know what it means it's a different thing that they murdered your son but that you killed him by yourself for the rest of your life you will not be normal again you will hear the voice of your son day and night even if it is after 100 years father what is this the, the people who would have killed Abraham himself were the servants among those servants there will be loyalists of his wife somebody will say let's kill this man because we can't stand the shame of telling the wife that we escorted the husband we've not only lost our jobs we've lost our lives too let's kill him so that we all die here and Abraham said it does not matter let's go and God was watching the first and only man that acted what he will be doing himself when he put Abraham on that altar he lifted the knife with the tears in the son's eyes he still did not stop it was God who had to say stop my question is what if Abraham did not know how to hear God let me repeat it again there must have been a tribal and see before he gave him that instruction there was a training on hearing God what if Abraham the life of Abraham and his son was at the mercy of a particular training that he went through jumping the school of the spirit is dangerous because something you are learning today is what will make another training tomorrow make sense what if Abraham could not hear God and he finally killed Isaac he would have written a book that God is a killer whereas God said stop the problem was his hearing the same way God told you in business stop but when God was training you to hear him you did not hear God told you have only three children you had the fourth one now the fourth one came with trouble because you did not hear we keep blaming God on many things but simply because we could not stay in the school of the Spirit Please listen carefully. Allah Sanekosiada has Cabrandi Gebalasiata. 
yesterday we spent we spent quite some hours in the airport before we came they kept shifting the flight I got up early in the morning and while I was praying I sent my airport people a I sent them a text I said I sense that we're going to travel in the afternoon I've already had that sense and I kept seeing a plane in my vision and I saw the Sun while the plane was going and I know this is not morning I said no 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 the flight is in place I already prepared my heart I said Lord whatever it is I give myself joy I stayed for five hours in the airport but I was already I had already prepared what to do so there was no disappointment because somewhere in my training he had taught me how to know when he is speaking there are many troubles you get into simply because you don't even know what God is doing are we together now there are times you are about to enter a car that would be the end of your life but because you rejected the training of discernment you are unable to know is this God or is this just my mind in these days leadership and exploit in the spirit will be at the mercy of your experience with God there is something that if you do not know about God will destroy you completely there are men of God who collected money that's what killed them money they should not collect somebody sincerely who came not knowing that that was the deception of Jacob and Esau and they gave their bet right without knowing and they collected 10 million naira. that 10 million naira they collected was the beginning of their downfall but when you walk with God he will train you that as you rise not every gift is for your taking you must have the stamina and the discipline to say no to many good things just because it's good does not mean it is of God you must be trained to know it is not only evil you say no to there are many good things in your life if Satan tries to use sin and evil to kill you and you escape he will use good things and kill you the most important thing is that you die doesn't matter with what he uses to kill you are we together my sister you never knew that your assignment is to marry a great man of God who is going to be blessing the world. So, as a young lady on campus, God begins to deal with you in a certain way. When a gentleman comes to you and says, I like you, God says, let me not even hear that thing again. Go back and let's pray. I say, God, what are you doing with me? You do not know that he's building capacity because the kind of life and destiny you are going to be part of requires a lot of stamina. If you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Some of you, God knew that you would be a minister in Nigeria. You were hoping you would go abroad. God said, this is your place of assignment. Nigeria seems to be having problems. You stay here. This is where your assignment is. Other people are running. God says, you are not going anywhere. This is your place of stay. That was why he taught you on faith. It took one year to teach you on faith and you were saying God what is it about faith he said no your kind of faith you don't know the obstacles that will be coming learn faith he will give you instructions to read the books of men of God on faith listen don't run away from the training of God it does not make sense while he's building you but you stay there for someone right now you are a leader you are a man of God but God has stopped you from starting a church God has stopped you from starting a fellowship. All the people you started together with, they have all kinds of ministerial platforms and you are just there to the point that people look at you and say, ah, but there's wisdom. You, you have been serving for three, five years. Why don't you start a little fellowship? And sincerely you want to do that. And God says, no. The reason is because there is something else he has prepared for you. Now, you can force yourself out of the will of God. He will honor you, but you must be willing to bear the consequence. We together the man Gordon Lindsay Gordon Lindsay who who founded Christ for the nations not Christ for all nations Christ for the nations for a long time in Gordon Lindsay's life 
he only kept partnering with people and ministries and people looked at him and said you're a very anointed man why don't you have your own platform you know and God would not let him for a long time he looked like a fool until God finally gave him the allowance and when he started Christ for the nations he just spread around like wildfire please hear me great people end time leadership and end time ministry will not be based on skill alone end time leadership and end time ministry will not just be based on technical academic skills if you were in the days of noah i shared it the last time i was in enugu here if you were in the days of noah and the flood was coming whether you were a professor or you had a store or you had a container to import and export the rain that was coming was coming to sweep everybody there was only one skill that was needed you're hearing god and you're obeying him every time in human history something seems to happen that shows the superiority of a man's spiritual advantage as against any other advantage i know that we live in a world today where we over celebrate intellectualism i'm not against that intellectualism is wonderful there are times we celebrate all kinds of crowns and we make it look like even though you are not spiritual at least since you are intelligent it's still all right when that flood comes it is not business people who will survive when that flood comes imagine that you were in the days of noah and a flood was coming let's assume you just finished dedicating your shop and then the next day the flood will start you will not be spared simply because your mind thinks well the flood was going to sweep everything there was only one man who survived and he survived on the strength of his relationship for him to be able to build an ark of gopher who tells you he was a skilled man that it took technical skills to make that happen but it took a spiritual foundation to get the instruction leaning on your technical skills alone leadership skills i'm not against it right submit yourself to all of that but please behind everything you do you must know that your experience with god is very very important so as a ceo you sit down and when someone talks about the lord jesus mm -hmm. we're not talking spiritual things here we're talking business really find out how the earth was created the bible tells us that the things that do appear came from the realm of the spirit so any other thing that must appear in your life must come from the realm of the spirit i can tell you the truth my life today the in order of priority the richest advantage in my life is not anything physical in fact i don't trust things that are physical the greatest advantage in my life today is my relationship and my experience with God that is the commodity and the product that is worth dying for no matter what else you lose the honor that you have only comes because he was there and he's there the lifting that you have everything that happens in your life I would be foolish today to trade my experience with God for more ministerial doors trade my experience with God for more no 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 I will keep learning I learn leadership I train myself but not at the detriment of the Word of God my first call in this leadership session go back to the place of your spiritual foundation I don't care what kind of business you do I don't care if you are an administrator you need to be able to build capacity a deep and a rich experience with god that will now give you the stamina to rise in your name we will rise adonai you reign on us it's in your name we will rise I don't know you will you may Hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are
are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from, and then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season. It is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 